The mainstream media have the most influence in the world, but we want to try to band together and use social media to try and turn around these paid influential bodies and try to make it a more compassionate message that gets through to people, not a paid one. Hey everyone, welcome back to Creating a Vegan World. Today we have Emily Walsh, and she has a vision to have vegans to have a social media influence and reach greater than the mainstream. So a lot of times we want to share our messages with the world. Do they're censored by different platforms? We don't have the reach as the mainstream media. So we have a lot of important messages to share. So her vision is to build a community of social media influencers where we could reach more people, reach our message, and get through to the people that we want to communicate with. So thank you for joining us, Emily. No worries. Thank you for having me. Definitely. So do you want to talk more about, I guess, the vision that you have for the future? What is the end result and why is it so important for the vegan world? Yeah, so social media has become one of the biggest tools that people use for communication and for learning and retrieving and giving out information. So it's really important that we have vegans out there spreading the vegan message and uh, and basically providing the uh, argument against animal agriculture. Absolutely, and I know there's different types of platforms where some people are strictly vegan, other people, they might have a fitness channel, but they're also vegan, so I guess, do you want to talk about maybe we could reach other people that we wouldn't otherwise by using different types of social media personalities? And you have, you have some experience with that with your channel. Yeah, definitely. So here's the thing, like there's all, it takes all different types of people to influence all different types of people. So some people are very logical people where they just like they want answers and they're very logical thinking and that just doesn't convince uh people that are more emotional or like or that you know uh have certain concerns so you know there's a lot of people that don't think that vegans get enough protein which is ridiculous but we have vegan influences that are bodybuilders powerlifters and just regular joe people that are fairly strong you know uh, so we need those types of people to show that um, vegan nutrition is adequate. Uh, we also need to um, have different types of people, whether it be like black, white, Asian, you know, um, gay, straight, uh, trans. Um, and we've just like got a wide variety of people from all around the world to kind of who speak all different languages to be able to spread this message and for, to go you know, for people to actually listen in because everybody has different interests. And the idea is that we use our own personal interests to attract other people who have that interest. And then, and then of course, spread um, a vegan message and teach people about animal agriculture, animal entertainment, and, you know, animal products, animal testing in general, and, and things like that. Absolutely. And that's like traditional marketing where like, I want to do the creating a vegan world brand. Let's say I reach 10 million people. My channels in English in the United States and across the world where somebody who only speaks German or Russian, we need more people to start channels that are able to do that type of stuff. So I guess one, we'll talk about the VCC in a second, but I guess if someone's listening to this, they want to start a social media brand. They want to get out there. Maybe they want to grow or choose a different niche to get into. Do you have any advice for them on that topic? Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. So that is a huge, huge question. Um, there's so many ways. Um, so there's so many different platforms. There's so much advice that I have for everyone. There's just so much information out there and so many things that I've learned and still need to learn. So it's 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 quite a big um it's a it's quite a big question. But the simple answer, I guess, um, is just to start. To start um, a YouTube channel, um, you know, like, I mean, at the start, you can just throw, at the end of the day, you can just throw spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks. 
Um, but like, yeah, it just depends on what you want to do. So like for me, I don't like to push one type of weight onto someone. I like to see like, you know, I like to do it as like, uh, you have to do this if you really want to. There's all different types of activism and you know, social media is only one. So, uh, like you have to really want to do it. Um, and the thing is, is that if you choose something that you're really passionate about, obviously people are passionate about animal rights, but you know, if you choose other things that you're really passionate about, like you, you do, what kind of videos do you like to make? Like to depending on what type of platform that you want to go on. Um, so some people enjoy making one minute videos and, you know, making TikToks and stuff for me. That just seems like I don't I don't get enough time to explain what I really want to say. Um, so I prefer longer YouTube videos um, for me, and I don't mind the longer hours spending on the the you know the video and, and editing and everything like that. And I really thoroughly enjoy it. Um, whereas like for Instagram, not so much, um, or like TikTok. But yeah, like I would say just start. And then there are some resources, like you just learn as much as you can beforehand and along the way. Um, so, I mean, the only thing that I could say is um, before you get started, the only mistakes that I could say to avoid when getting started for like maybe YouTube is don't get a really complicated name. Um, so if you get something that's hard for people to pronounce or too long, then it's harder for people to kind of talk about you because that's how that's how people get famous um that's how a lot of people get like known is like chatter you know gossip and if that if they go oh yeah there's this youtube channel called oh i can't remember the name then you're already missing out on that exposure already um and you can always here's the thing like after you got that you can always change your name for starters um you can always delete your videos so at the end of the day, just start, just, just do something and take advantage of the, um, uh, of the resources that we're going to talk to you about later. You said. <laughs> Absolutely. And as far as like the, the niche goes, like I could tell from my experience, it's just like put out things you're interested in. And it's kind of like things naturally come together where my brain's really about creating a blueprint for changing the world and like systems changes. Then I find other people interested, I interview them, and it's really cool how it comes together like that. So someone might have a passion for raw vegan cooking or bodybuilding or even playing video games, for example, like find something that you're going to commit to. And then you said another part about like you love doing the videos, but Instagram is a different story where people have been telling me to do Instagram for a while. And all the content on my Instagram, I have someone else doing that for me. I partner with someone else. I hired someone to do the designs for everything. And the only reason it's going out there is because um, levering someone else in like a business sense to not just, I don't know, make me do the things that I just naturally hesitate to do. So that's really cool. Do you want to, I guess, talk more about the VCC and what your vision is for bringing social media influencers together and everything along those lines? So VCC is stands for Vegan Content Creators. It is on Discord and it is also on Facebook. Now, Facebook is only very, very small. I've been concentrating mostly on Discord, um, but you can choose either or. Uh, at the moment, I would say Discord because it's a bigger community. It's a lot more active. And basically, um, I just rather can create like an online community that's there for vegans who are on social media on an influencer level, so not private, but on a public show to everyone type of way. Uh, it's it's open to anyone that wants to do that. Um, and we all help each other out. So I sometimes offer one on one like help coaching. I don't charge anything for this. I'm not claiming to be an expert. Um, all that I do is for free. And this is under, you know, I, I think of it as I'm doing it for free because it's activism. I'm helping out other vegan social media so that they can get bigger. They can get a stronger, further reach so that, um, you know, the animals benefit. So this is not for my benefit. This is not for, um, you know, money, um, but it's all for the animals. And basically you just, 
uh, you know, you come in there and there's all different types of platform, like there's all different types of channels set up to help you either improve your content, your existing content, um, or to give advice on how to use different platforms. Uh, there's also different ideas being shared, you know, different um, thoughts and ideas being shared in there. There's voice channels for people to have a chat and get to know each other and to share their thoughts and opinions on different types of things. There is, um, and then of course, the biggest thing is collaborating. Um, and that is when you join your social media inf like platform to another platform. Okay, and you bring that audience together, you share that audience, and that is going to further your reach. Um, because I feel like, you know, if we have uh, even just like vegans, which is like an echo chamber, you know, like we need a good echo chamber as well. You know, we need to have like those vegans, we need to support the vegan YouTubers to get those views, um, to get that further reach. So if you can share your audience and like your audience becomes like all these other social media influencers like audience, then we could just grow exponentially. And the advice given is like, you know, a lot of people think that if you have the right message, that it doesn't matter um, if you get a good reach or not. But that simply isn't true. Now, obviously having a big, big audience and giving out the wrong message is worse <laughs> than, a, than the right message smaller. But some people think that watering down a message to get further is not as effective as having a stronger message. But I find that when you have, sometimes when you have a strong message, um, you uh, like, you just, you find that you don't have you just don't get that reach and you get more of an echo chamber and an echo chamber is when everybody's disagreeing with you you get a bunch of vegans that already agree with you or vegan activists that already agree with you and you're really not spreading the message that far um so so yeah sometimes we need to yeah like um i'm not sure if this goes along the realms but sometimes you need to uh, kind of water it down like a little bit so sometimes people's platforms that have nothing to do with veganism are just as important as the platforms that have that like you know solely um, their purpose is talking about animal rights so like David Rams for is a good example of like an account that is strong on the vegan message and he does it really well and he use clickbait titles and 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 thumbnails that really draw those people in and same with Joey Carbstrong. But, you know, we've also got other social media influencers like Hitomi and we have, um, you know, Sarah Kidd, uh, she has a, a baking channel and we've got like Brian Turner, you know, like where, you know, like he does like exercise and, and like, you know, vegan nutrition and like Nimai where he just does like bodybuilding. And we've got all these people and the thing is is that they everybody has their own thing and even if it's not strong on that vegan message and always talking about animal rights people are attracted to like non-vegans are attracted to different things which is why i talk about feminist issues to get those people interested in watching my content to watching my um second youtube channel emily walsh and then we can further that message um, like because we can create a bigger reach and then when a vegan message is being said it's been heard by a lot more people so anyway i don't know if i went off on tangents or not but <laughs> no that was amazing yeah like for example like if someone's before i went vegan if i saw a social media influencer and they just I wouldn't follow vegan social media influencers, but if it's something interesting like entrepreneurship or personal development, I'd follow them for that content. And just the fact if I hear they're vegan or plant-based um, before I was vegan, like that would resonate with me or like I'd, I'd probably be more curious to try it if someone I look up to in a different area. So that's a great way to reach people that so we're not caught in those echo chambers where in my world, it's like everybody on social media is vegan because that's what I follow. Facebook's smart. They only show me vegan ads, different things like that. So 
that's really cool. Exactly. And the thing is, is that we need to, you know, that's why on the vegan, I just want to say like on the vegan content creators group, we accept any vegans on social media. They don't have to have a strong vegan message. And a one way, um, so if you think, oh, you know, I got it about hairdressing or mine's about mental health, like mental health, um, you know, Sammy Grimm is another example for that. So Sammy Grimm is a YouTuber and she talks about her mental illnesses and she has a predominantly mental illness like channel. I haven't seen all her videos, so I can't exactly, I don't want to specify how much, but the thing is, is that her, her boyfriend is Brian Turner who has a stronger message on veganism. And that's perfect. They're perfect combination, even though they're, they're a couple. You don't have to be a couple. Okay, when they make collaboration videos, all right, then they share their audience in a way and they get, a, and her audience who just are interested in mental health, they will get exposed to the vegan message just by collaborating with someone with a strong vegan platform. So like if, let's just say, for example, I don't make, I have a channel that doesn't, it's not predominantly animal rights, okay? If I then collaborate with Joey Carbstrong or something, he comes on my channel and, you know, I, I mostly like cooking or whatever, then, um, or like I talk about something not even to do with veganism, like it could be bikes, bike riding, I don't know then they're going to be exposed to Joey Cubstrong, okay? And what happens is when you watch a video um, where it involves someone in there um, and then you happen to go on their channel, you just check it out for five seconds, YouTube picks up on that and it'll start recommending videos from YouTube. Um, so, and then they start watching like, you know, they might be recommended a couple of Joey Carbstrong's um, videos and you might think, oh, that's interesting because uh, he has a very good clickbait title and he'll go on to that. So it's really important. So this like this thing, like it, you don't have to have a strong vegan message, um, but collaborating with other people is just a great way of just interlocking all those interests and having that vegan message in there somewhere. That's great. Yeah, like you said, the networking effect. I joined the Discord server for vegan content creators probably like a week ago, and you introduced me to two people. I interviewed one of them that's going to be on my channel. Who's that? The 40-year-old vegan. Oh, and yeah. Then, uh, that amazing content, and that led to me introducing him to another organization that's fighting for human rights. Then uh, a few other people I spoke with on there. But um, yeah, as you're talking, I'm brainstorming ideas for creating a vegan world. So for example, it's primarily veganism, my channel, but if I interview people who have large channels about, let's say, zero waste or environmental sustainability, it's it's like getting into like those types of networks and then their content with their audience would see my message and maybe they're not vegan yet. They might be environmentalists. They'll probably come over and some of them might become vegan because of it. So that's how I'm interpreting what you're saying for my own type of thing. So it's really cool the insights that you have. And like you said, uh, on the VCC, you you have these trainings, you share this for any types of influencers. Yes, exactly. It's any types of influencers, as long as they are vegan and, you know, they're truly vegan, not just like the plant-based for health reasons, as long as they're there for the animals and they want to collaborate with other people that care about animals and want to, you know, uh, spread this message, then they're welcome. Absolutely. I love that. And then during the beginning of the interview, I talked about how like there's the problem or the mainstream audience, I guess the mainstream media has like a dictated narrative for all like CNN, Fox News in the US, like there are certain stories that go out, certain themes and like more important topics are sometimes not covered. Do you want to talk more about that problem? Just kind of rephrase that in your own words. Yeah. So um, yeah, just ask me a question about it and, and I'll answer. Okay. I guess, uh, what's the problem you see with the way like the mainstream media takes over and has like the market share of reaching the most people? Like what problems do you see there and what do we need to fix as a vegan community? Where do I start? Like, obviously they're against us, you know, um, they're always on the farmer's side, like, uh, not always. Sometimes I do talk about animal rights. Um, 
you know, especially when we've directly shown footage where it's really, really bad. Um, but most of the time it's like, oh, poor farmers. They had to deal with like some people coming onto their property. It's like they instead of them thinking that it's about people coming onto their place of business, they say people coming onto their homes. There's certain words that they use that trigger people into thinking, oh, they're coming into their homes. You know, and people imagine like their houses just sitting around the houses and having people intrude. It's not the same when you have a huge property and your business. And it's not like the animal rights people are going into those people's houses. Um, they're just staying on the farm where the animals are and poorly, like very, very mistreated. Um, but yeah, obviously they want to, you know, they want to sell this demonizing animal rights activists as these like extreme vegans that, you know, just want to push like, like a religion onto someone when it's like, no, we're trying to fight for rights for real beings that live on this earth. Veganism isn't a faith. It isn't faith. Okay, we don't have faith, we have science. That's what that's what veganism has. We have science on our side. Um, you know, and I feel like <clears throat> and I feel like yeah, they just they're so against us and we need the more like we need pushback. We need huge pushbacks. And when you've got certain um people with big platforms like Billie Eilish and um you know, we've got um other I can't think right now, but we've got other platforms that are fairly big. They do really well, um, and but we need to have less people that are like, yeah, I'm vegan for the animals, but, you know, I'm accepting of other people's points of views. Like, you would never hear, like, a trans activist say, yeah, like, I'm for trans people, but I, you know, I respect, like, you know, like, I respect that people don't want to, um, you know, give trans people's rights or something, you know, like, or gay people saying, oh yeah, I want, I fight for gay people to get married, but I respect that other people don't want gay people to get married. Like, you just, you just don't hear that. You just don't hear that, like, oh, I have respect for people that don't want to give me rights. Absolutely. And it's, I think the great thing about social media is like it's like a grassroots system where the mainstream system is narrative, but like this is our opportunity to come together and really get the message out there where we have the freedom, we have the control of our channels for the most part. I know there's Facebook and YouTube have their policies, but in general, this is an opportunity to reach billions of people. And um, I guess to wrap things up, do you want to, I guess, direct people in the right direction again for joining the VCC or any place you want people to go to learn more? Yes. Okay. So what I, if you want to join the vegan content creators, um, discord or Facebook group, you have to contact me. Um, my contact details will be linked in the video below, um, in the Instagram. So Instagram is my main, my best source for getting in contact with me. Um, and that, and you just have to message me, letting me know what platform you're on, that you're vegan and you'd like to join the vegan discord, uh, sorry, either the VCC Discord or the VCC Facebook. <laughs>